Hello everybody and welcome once again to Pneumatograft for Pressurize and Minecraft 115. So today we are going to cover the things we haven't done so far. I've probably covered some of these in a previous series but let's just finish it off and with these items. Let's get started. So things we haven't done so far are tag workbenches, display tables, plastic blocks, Pneumatograft doors, elevators, um, I don't think we've done the transfer gadget. Uh, we certainly haven't done the spawn agitator. Uh, some of these things I'm not 100% sure about because I've never actually used a security station. Uh, the nanometer is useful, but not in this one. Reinforced air canisters. And then we've got the pneumatic, pneumatic dynamo and the flux compressor. We've also got the air cannon. So let's get these things built. I've actually got everything prepared today. Makes a pleasant change, doesn't it? So these are the items that we've actually got. I think that if I take everything out of here except for this one and this one, we should be able to craft everything that we want. I would like to craft on screen today. So let's start from this end here. Let's make this. I've made the stone base already. It's very simple. Four pieces of reinforced stone or stone and a pressure tube um, so th then we should be able to make the air cannon up like this and the air cannon is a useful tool let's we'll look at that in a second first of all we'll do one of these we'll do the flux compressor i've not built this one either um this, this is the one that converts power to air pressure and this one here the pneumatic dynamo does exactly the opposite and the reason i'm building those is just for completeness really um and then on top of that i would like to build a security station because i've got everything prepared for that as well and that's what i've only the only thing i want to craft and have a look at those when we we put them down other than that i've actually got the rest of the stuff already prepared so let's go and have a look at doing something with that it's all over here These charging stations aren't used for anything. So where shall we start? Let's put some of these items down, for example. Let's put down this this, this air cannon here. And what we're going to do with the air cannon, if we have a look at it, what it does is it, it can use a GPS tool in order to send items to the location of this GPS tool. And then it has different things. So let's have a look at what we've got in here. We've got force. 100%. I'm not exactly sure what that means to be honest with you. The status. So it's got it's in an orange state because it's got no it's actually got no pressure. So we need some pressure and it's got nothing to fire and it's got no coordinates set. Right. Quite a few things wrong with that. <laughs> so let's move it. Now let's move it to where we can actually use it because I have set up a little air compressor here and we should be able to connect it to that one no problem whatsoever. So let's do that like this and then we just need a gps tool if i haven't got one with me i should just go and get one and be back in a second yep i've got a gps tool They're actually in this chest here so we can do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to send items from um this into this chest or at least towards this chest so let's just for example we'll use this chest here so we'll shift right click it with the gps tool put the gps tool into here so now the cannon is turning around as you can see to point to that location um it needs a button because it won't fire without a button so let's just make i think i've got some stone in here i've got some pieces of stone so let's make a button we can use a button or a lever it's just a redstone app. um high signal that will generate this and set it off to fire so let's have a look at what we've got problems nothing to fire okay and it's got an air leak i don't think it has got an air leak actually i'm not quite sure it's complaining about that so let's just put something in into fire let's put in a sli some slime blocks like that have a look at this again so air leaps place pipes on all machines on the output sides i don't know what that means to be honest with you let's just shoot it efforts it should work anyway and sure enough it sent these over here now, i didn't send them into the chest as you may well have noticed because it needs an upgrade so let's have a look at what upgrade it's got in here it needs a block tracker upgrade and this fires automatics will will go straight into the inventory and you only need one of these um it's also got a dispenser upgrade 
so it then acts like a dispenser. I think I'm not quite sure how the, what that means to be honest with you. But a block trucker upgrade we've got here. Let's put one of those into here like that. Um, and then this time, when we put the slime blocks back in here again, they will. When we press it, this time they will end up in here, and we've got the 24 slime blocks as you can see. Let's move things over here so we can see uh, what that does for us. So that. So that basically works. I'm not exactly sure what the dispenser upgrade is. Never mind. We can we can just right click this and we come to the page, and it shows you the recipe and how to build it. And then you can go back. So it's really an item that can uh, transport items using compressed air. So we've seen the GPS to redstone pulse for fire it, dispenser upgrade install. The cannon behave like a vanilla dispenser. Okay, for certain okay, so for certain items like TNT fire charges. So, and we've already covered this one so, so basically that's it now there are other upgrades in this one of course and there will be a, the range upgrade that'll be a entry track of dealt with that one item life upgrade um, so this increases the item life upgrade I'm not actually sure what that means in terms of practice range upgrades so we can go up to 250 blocks if we add eight range upgrades and then max security upgrade but is prevents it from exploding um, speed upgrades make it go faster that's obvious and volume upgrades increase the amount of air in it obviously you have to choose which ones you've got so that's so that's what the air cannon does we it basically shoots items into inventories for you, which is quite handy in certain circumstances. I haven't used it yet, so it's, it's not something I use a ton. So the next thing we'll have a look at are the doors. So in this chest here, I've got two man pneumatic doors. They should actually stack, but I think one of them's got some a minus air, something like a minus air in it. Now these work like this. As you took me a while to figure it out, I should have looked at the book first of all. So let's put one of these down here like this. And you'll see that it's working this way here like this. Uh, it's night time, I shall be back in a second. So this is actually facing the wrong way. I would like the doors to open between these two here like that. So the, the correct way to do it is to put it down the way you want the door to face, I think. So let's try that. Yes, indeed. If, you, if, you've made, if you've done it wrong, like I have, you just turn them around with the, the wrench and that's the correct position. And then we can put down two doors. Um, I should have the two doors with me, good. Of course, you don't have to have two doors, one will be fine. Like that. And they're open. And they're open because this has got no pressure in it. So let's give them some pressure to start with. Um, let's come down here and give it a bit of pressure. The moment it's turned off, as you can see, that should now get pressure. And it actually says nearby player. Well, I'm actually quite near to it. So, and turn this one on as well. So we've got some pressure in this. Yeah. So when I go away, the doors will close. So when I come near it, the doors will open. Like that. Now, it's reasonably slow, but so obviously you can speed these things up. So let's have a look at the upgrades in here. So range upgrades. You can have eight range upgrades which will increase the distance. I'm not going to bother, bother with security upgrades for the time being. Uh, volume upgrade and speed upgrades. Obviously with speed upgrades it goes faster. Let's just compare that. I've got some speed upgrades here. I've actually got plenty of range upgrades as well. Now let's see what that does. So speed upgrades just put them in one side. Actually they're quite expensive speed upgrades. Well, Let's just come back over here. Now one of these doors should close as we go further away. And the other one, as you saw, maybe the other one opens a lot faster, like almost instantaneously, as you can see, no slow movements. So now what we can also do is change the redstone behavior of this. It's got different behaviors. So a nearby, nearby player, nearby player and looking at it, and wooden door behavior. So let's just change this one to nearby player and looking and then change this one to um, wooden door behavior. Like that. So, oh, not, not get changed. Wooden door behavior, shouldn't really be able to like that. Should be able to click it, 
and open it. In fact, it might be that they are actually linked together. Nearby and looking. So if I turn away, this one should... Ah, oh, maybe not. Let's change this to nearby and looking as well. So that when you look at the door, it should open up. Yeah, they are in fact behaving together, as you can see. And then you can nicely see the speed difference as what's going on as well. Wooden door behavior, let's just change them both to that. It's pretty obvious what it does actually. So, so you just close one, closes both. Quite neat, as you can see. So right, that's the doors. And there's not much else to the doors, just that bit of functionality. So I'm going to remove these two doors now because we don't need them and put them away. Oops, I probably should shut that off first of all, shouldn't I? Let's do that. <laughs> and do the same down here as well. Oh yeah, of course that's just pressured from before. And that's actually losing air, so let's put one of these down, down on here like... Um, let's just turn it off actually. The drones, <laughs> my rubbish collectors, maybe have picked up something I didn't want it to do. Let's have a look. Now, how many times do I use that to do? Open this up, I don't know. So I've actually got an extra piece of pipe in here. That's not so great. Um, doors. I think it picked up a door by the looks of it. And maybe it also picked up <laughs> the, uh, the, the door bases. Never mind. So the next thing we can have a look at are elevators. So what I've got set up here is it goes down a little bit. Oh, look, you can see something was dropped down. Turn on the magnet and pick it up again. So the door, one of the door bases got dropped down. So I put the other one into here like that. And then I'll have a look at the two elevators. Again, they should stack, but because one's got a minus air pressure and the other hasn't different tags, and therefore it'll work differently. So now with the elevators, we can also remove this button. We we don't want the button for that. We probably would want a lever. So I can simply remove this piece here. What's happened? Is there a drone coming around? <laughs> oh yes, there he is. So let's just remove this. And it doesn't, of course, do its stuff. I think it might have taken that. Maybe I just disabled the rubbish collector for the time being. I missed it. It was too fast. So let's just put down here an elevator block like that. Um, and then we need to put on top of the elevator block these elevator frames. I probably also need while I'm in here because I did make it prepared them already some scaffolding so we can actually climb. Obviously I can use my builder mode and fly that's one thing but maybe you don't have builder mode at this stage so and yes sure enough you can right click the bottom as I thought you could do. So we can then put these, let's go up here come across here and then put these up like this. Probably have to press shift. <laughs> press shift and of course they go up. So let's just do that. And now I can probably press, don't need to press shift anymore. So let's just go up again. I think I need to be at the bottom to do this. Otherwise it puts them at the top. Four, five, six. So we should be able to work it like, like that. Can I reach those? I can't reach them I just come down one there and I can indeed. The reason I'm doing it like this is because the elevator is an interesting block. It has different ranges so that's eight high. Okay um, let's go down through these. I'll probably break this one. Axe. But you can break it anyway. Oh, very easily as it happens. Let's put that over there and make sure that goes up. Okay, good. So now the elevator block will work with a redstone signal. So here I've got... I want that lever as it happens. I've got some more levers here. Let's just put a redstone signal on this block. And that should force the ele this to go up to its maximum height. Its maximum height... And I think we can see this with the One Pro. No, we don't. We, we right-click the base here like this, and we look at the status. So the current max extension is 4 meters, like this. In fact, the book tells you quite a lot about it. Anyway, press Shift, right-click on it, and you go back a couple of pages, and you, oh, that's actually the wrong one. 
I think I've noticed this before as it happens. Let's just try that again. Nope. <laughs> ah, oh yes, there, there we are. We hit the right place. So it's telling about the frame and it's also telling us about the callers. We'll cover that in a second. So multi-block elevators, elevators, okay. So we can actually stack these vertically, the elevator bases. So let's do that and see what then happens. <laughs> what happened? Oh, of course, it took away all the base bits. Right, fine. I think the drone's here. Good, I can pick him up now, so he doesn't pick anything up. Good. So we can break this one more block down here. If I've got enough space in my inventory, it looks a bit tight, because it's you quite often get these inferior messages when you break stuff. Um, don't need the button. Let's put the button in there. Let's just go down one block with this silk touch pickaxe, this one. I've got to be careful with this pickaxe, it's very aggressive. So now we can put on top of this two elevator bases. There's one. And in fact, it did replenish the other one, so let's put the other one down like this. As it happens, they've both connected in, I think. That's just, I'm not 100% sure whether the bottom one's connected in. It will have connected in from the bottom, won't it? So let's put on here now the these eight frames press shift of course for the first one and you'll see that's going up in fact we can actually stand on this press shift on it no let's go on the scaffolding i put these down now so now we're high we're higher we're at eight blocks high so let's go down through these and then we can look at the base again it'll tell us uh, which bit we've got to click here. So we now look at the status. It's now saying we're extended to that. In fact, it's proportional to the redstone signal. So if we remove this lever here, for example, and put some redstone down, have I got any redstone with me? No, I'll just go and get some redstone and be back in a second. So if we now put down a redstone signal, you can see this one's got a signal. So that'll be a signal of 15. This will then have a signal of 14. So this isn't going to go up the eight blocks. So let's have a look at the status of this. So it's going to go to 7.5 blocks, um, which is great. Now the next thing we can do with this, of course we can get rid of these like that, is we can put down elevator caller blocks. Now the elevator caller blocks need to be at a specific height. So let's just do that. Um, it's night time again, unfortunately. Let's just take some of these blocks here and put down some other way to call the blocks. Actually, I'll tell you what I'll do. So I'll build it up and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I'll basically just set up a tower of blocks here so we can do it. So we can break this one here and then we can put into this the other way to call the block. And that's got one floor. Uh, the more floors you have, the higher it goes. So what we're going to do is do the same thing, but maybe not at the very top of it this time. Let's just do it, say here now let's just do it here break this block away and then we can put down the elevator call block at this level uh, i think we can do this i'm just going to make sure i get the right angle yeah sure enough there it goes and with this you can go to any particular any particular height you want to so you right click the floor you want to and you go up as you can see so now we're at the second floor so if we had a floor here, of course, we can just use the scaffolding to show that and then go back down again. And that's basically it. So let's have a look at what upgrades we can put into here, because that's always important. Charging upgrades. So we can actually put four charging upgrades in here, um, which are these, to recover air. So it uses less air, which may or may not be important, depending on what you're you're doing so we can put those in there i don't know how we're going to see that <laughs> i'll be honest with you um this one here's it's got it's just got a hopper with some charcoal in it and it's got the very simple connector here we're just feeding it in with an advanced pcb on here emitting the pressure gauge so we set it at 4.5 so that just basically burns fuel so right and the other one of course we can do is a speed upgrade so let's put some speed upgrades in here and then try this again try again i've got to be oh i'm already there <laughs> try again very fast as you can see in fact you can do anything you want with this you can also export items so um 
do items. So let's just take these here and let's put these onto the lift and make sure I've got my magnet off first of all. Otherwise, I'll pick them up again. Just drop those down there. Okay. And then you can send them up there. <laughs> In fact, it was so fast, it sent, it drops them off. And that actually does happen. So what you do with this is you take them out again. And let's just press it back again like this. Stand back a bit so we don't, we don't pick the items up. And then throw them down again. Like that. Oh, I don't think they actually went on that time. Let's just try again. There we go. Keep out of the way so we don't pick them up. And then we can transport them. Oops. Flick them off again. <laughs> this time it's down there. I have to pick them up with my thing. So if I hadn't got so, so many holes in this, it might work better. Um, what we can, of course, do is these is to camouflage them. So let's just take the camouflage applicator out, which I've got with me, I think. And that should be the grey one. I can't see it at the moment. I'm sure I took it. Oh, there it is. So we then want to say, let's say we want to do these with grass blocks. So we select the grass block first of all, like that. And then we can apply this onto these components here, of course, because we've got them in our hand. So then it looks a bit tidier. We can also do that over here, even with other... Oops, try again. I can't do it on, on these, but I can do it on all the pipes, as you can see. Makes life look a bit tidier, doesn't it? Oh. Try again. I missed the I missed the blue bit. So any of the things you can you can camouflage anything that you can see is highlighted in blue. Actually, I'm, so, I'm surprised I would have expected to be able to do the uh, elevator stuff. Never mind. As well. So that's elevators covered. I think. I don't think there's anything else we can do with the upgrades in here. Let's have a look. Obviously, speed. We've covered that one. Security upgrades and volume upgrades. Yes, the usual for upgrades so the next thing is this the display table so with the display table you can actually hop, you can use it for automation I'm not quite sure what automation you can use but it actually holds a single item like this you saw I put 59 grass blocks in and in here there's one so then I can hop it turn it like that and down here we might have one so this is the um, this is another hopper underneath. It doesn't work at the side. It has to be underneath, or maybe with an omni hopper you can use it in both directions. And you see, you've got two. So it's a it's a way of having a single item, and all it does is display items. But it does have a use. So let's go back over here, and the display the use of the display item of crafting thing. We can put a, a book and a quill on top of it, and we get this tag workbench. So I would like to demonstrate the tag workbench. There is one thing I'd like to demonstrate before I do that, and that's the transfer gadget. If I put down two chests like this, I'll try that again because that didn't work as I wanted it to. Let me just get my axe out. Actually, the axe because I don't want to use a pack that's too aggressive. Like that. And then if I press shift and put it down here, it'll keep them separate. So this time, if I take the transfer gadget, which is in here, like that and then put something into this chest I've put it on the side of it as you saw maybe you saw that I didn't intend to so let's just put some slime blocks in here and if I've got that on the right side which it doesn't look like I have they should get transferred into here for she can't see it um, can I see it with a different tool oh, I can't see. oh yes you can see it with the logic you can't see it but you could ca get catch it again so we can shift right click this side here and then the items should start to come in here as you can see it's a very slow transfer gadget it's probably slower than hopper and there's nothing you can do with it you can't speed it up it's just a very simple thing and the recipe for it is a hopper with one compressed iron so it really does like a, act like a hopper but it doesn't take any space between items okay let's take those out again So the next thing I want to look at is the tag workbench. So I'll tell you what, I'll be back in a second when I've cleared up my inventory and got the stuff ready. So here we are, the tag workbench. And what this does is it allows you to use Minecraft tags. Now not everything has tags. If you press shift on these or control, you should see the tags. 
Uh, items like this one here, it's got mine, this one's got an oak sign, it's got a, sign, a tag saying Minecraft signs, and these planks have got Minecraft blanks. What you can do with this, you can shift click this into here like this, and then double click this, and it comes along here. You could say, for example, do that with, with oak planks as well, like this. And then you've got a something here that we put in some paper, and then we can have a, a tagged filter, and which is tagging both pla planks and signs. Okay, fairly straightforward. You can actually, if you look at, the, you can also do the uses of this, and we can craft it back to a piece of plain paper, if you want to. So what this does is it allows you to simplify um, certain types of programs. I do need to set up a couple of uh, GPS tools. I'll do that, and actually I'll do that first, and I'll be back in a second. So what I'd like to do is to start another little program. We'll just very simple one we'll just press tab we'll get the standby piece out when I can see it teleport to look at this one here and then we just need two import pieces so we're going to import and export so just items in this particular case we'll just take out one of those get the other one like this so this is import from inventory so we're going to put this one first we're going to put an area piece we need two area pieces as it happens like that and then we can select point one we'll use this one and then we'll do the same one for this one here that's so we'll select this as point two or point one for this one just like that and they should actually be beside each other yes they are good so we're going to import from this inventory and we're going to export the items to these inventories but what we're going to do is we're going to tag filter it so we need an item filter here and then in this item filter we put we search our inventory for this tag here like this so what this is going to do this is if you is going to is it tell me what you can no you can't what it's going to do is it's going to take the, the stuff that we've done in fact it doesn't even take it out of your inventory and it's going to import from this chest just these type of items and export out into the next chest these items so let's program this drone <laughs> I'm not quite sure what's going on with that drone. I think that's the demo drone. I used the wrong one. I used the rubbish collector. Ha <laughs> ha. Never mind. Um, it's not important for this particular demonstration. I'll fix it later on. I think I've still got a copy of the program. So I've set it up down here. So we can have a look at this one over here. So these are the two chests here like this so this has got in it some signs of different types and some planks of different types like this and it's going to export them into here so let's put the drone down like this which one have I got I think let me just check 35 inventory oh this probably is the probably is the rubbish collector drone I'm not quite sure what happened to that let's put it down like this so it should take items out of here and put them into here if I've got everything correct if I haven't let's just put the other drone down oh yes right I did reprogram I did reprogram this and it was very fast as you saw it's taken everything out of here and just left in the items which haven't been done I'm not quite sure what's going on here sometimes things slightly don't work as I hope them to work but there we are so I have to fix that drama program again so that's how you so that's that it saves basically having in the program a lot of pieces uh, there are also different sign types there's a lot of different plank types so that's very handy so, let's put that away. so the, the last thing i think i've got time for today oh, we'll have a quick look at these and how, how many times have i done that so we have a look at this one and this is the flux compressor and it's taking input is taking power um, and it generates heat and it actually generates quite a lot of heat depending on how much you've got in it upgrades you can have security upgrades so it doesn't blow always a good one to put into these type of machines because they're fairly expensive speed upgrades volume upgrades are also handy so you can store more air this one is the opposite this is an output so it's outputting energy um, again it's this machine requires or produces heat I'm not sure which one it does. I suspect it produces heat. So it's not going to have pressure. So it needs at least 15 bars. This is actually quite a, a high pressure 
machine as you can see so it operates between those two and it's got no pressure at the moment which is obviously the case and now i can't do i can't do this because i don't have power in this mod but you can i've done it before so you can see how it work, works before and i think that's possibly about it actually the other things i'd like to cover that i haven't done yet is a security station like this let's put this down like this and you can we'll have a look at doing this it does need it does need some blocks which are producing so it does need a diagnostic subroutine which should be in this chest one of these two chests i thought it was in one of those two chests oh no we left that back at the other thing uh, in the in the other chest but i'll cover this in another episode i think but one last thing i would like to cover is that in the helmet it's got an upgrade in it and one of the upgrades are put in put in 64 security upgrades now they what they do is they allow you to hack things so if i enable the block tracker so i've, I've programmed to alt alt h it'll then show me i've got 20 trackables uh, hackables around here there you have got a lever here so if i press hack if i press h on the lever it hacks it and, t and turns it on <laughs> Not always that useful, but you can do this with mobs as well. Um, I also haven't covered the spawner agitator, have I? Let's have a look at this. Let's take this down here like this and go and find a, a mob spawner. I've got there's one down there, not too far away. I shall be back in a second when we're at the mob spawner. So here we are. In fact, it's a hackable as well, so we can hack it to neutralize it. That always takes a bit longer. I'm not sure if a speed upgrades apply to this or just a number of modules so we're good okay so now it's neutralized so we can actually break away these bits and so it's dark so the mobs could actually spawn here what happens if i put the mob oh no I did, yes i did remember it if we put this on it like this sure enough even though it's neutralized uh try to get a sword with me it's actually working so there you have it so um Hack to neutralize the hack it again so we can hack, turn it off. It takes obviously it's taking quite a long time to turn this off. You can also do you can also hack mobs as well. Um, at least you can. Oh, it doesn't work. We can't hack him. You see, the zombie we can't hack. It's not available to be hacked. <laughs> Gosh. So what we we'll do? We can also remove this, but you need to remove it with a camouflage applicator like this. <laughs> Uh, there's quite a few mobs around here at the moment. I'm just going to have to uh, get rid of them. And then we'll hack it again. And turn it off, disable it, so we don't need to worry about it being... Oh, yes, I got fed by the aerial interface. So now it's disabled, or will be in a second. Good. So we can be, we can be near it. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put a torch on top of it. Which it picks up quite a lot of... Uh, put that in there. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, next episode, I'm going to migrate my world across to Minecraft 1.16, and we shall be carrying on from there. So until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.